You've been sad, frustrated, and you feel helpless because you're wondering how you can visit with a grandchild, great-grandchild, stepchild, or sibling, and you need legal help. Good afternoon. My name is attorney Danielle Pinkston, and I am the owner and founder of Pinkston Law Group. And welcome back to What You Should Know Wednesday. Our topic today is visitation by non-parents pursuant to 750 ILCS 5-602.9. There are two main categories for visiting the child that is not your own. The first is electronic communication. This means the child is not in your physical custody or possession, but you're able to visit by means of the telephone, electronic mail, instant messaging, video conferencing, or other wired and wireless technology via the internet. The second type is in-person visitation time. If you are a person's grandparent, great-grandparent, step-parent, or sibling, and the child is at least one year of age or older, and there has been unreasonable denial of visitation by a parent that causes undue mental, physical, and emotional harm to the child, and at least one other condition occurs or is present, the court may grant you an order for visitation. The conditions are as follows. The first one is the child's other parent is deceased or has been missing for at least 90 days. To be considered missing, that parent's location has to be undetermined and that parent has to have been reported missing to a law enforcement agency. Number two, a parent of the child is incompetent as a matter of law. Three, the parent has been incarcerated in jail or prison for a period in excess of 90 days immediately prior to the filing of the petition, or the parents or the child's parents have been granted a dissolution of marriage or have been legally separated from each other, or there is a pending dissolution of marriage or some other action involving the parents' responsibilities and parenting time, and at least one of the parents does not object to the grandparent, great-grandparent, step-parent, or sibling having visitation time with that minor child. If the parents were never married, what's, what's foremost important is that, again, the parents are found to be the biological parents of this child. Think about it. How can you say you are the child's grandparent, great-grandparent, or sibling if there has not been a finding that, again, that parent is actually the biological child of his or her mother and father? That's first and foremost. Again, the court takes into account other considerations when they determine if they're going to grant or deny your petition for visitation. One consideration is whether the child has resided with the petitioner for at least six consecutive months with or without the parent being present. Number two, whether the child had frequent and regular contact or visitation with the petitioner for at least 12 consecutive months. And number three, whether the grandparent, great-grandparent, sibling, or step-parent was a primary caretaker of the child for a period of not less than six consecutive months within the 24-month period immediately preceding the commencement of the proceeding. Keep those factors in mind. So, you know that you have standing to file a petition, but where do you actually file a petition with the court to access um, you know, legal means or remedies in obtaining a court order allowing visitation? Well, first things first. If there is no pending proceeding between the child or the child's parents, then you can file a petition for visitation in the county where the child resides. If there is a pending proceeding for dissolution of marriage, allocation of parental responsibilities or parenting time, then you can file your petition in that pending proceeding. Keep in mind, there's a rebuttable presumption that a fit parent's actions and decisions regarding grandparent, great-grandparent, sibling, or step-parent visitation are not harmful to the child's mental, physical, and emotional health. However, the burden is on the party filing a petition under this section to prove that a parent's actions and decisions regarding visitation will cause undue harm to the child's mental, physical, and emotional health. Your petition can be looked at as being a balloon, okay? However, within that balloon, the presumption is that a fit parent's decisions and actions regarding visitation are proper. What you must do is take a pin and pop the balloon 
with facts and evidence that can prove to the court that you not having visitation time would in fact be harmful to that child's mental, physical, and emotional health. Even if you receive an order granting you visitation time, any rights guaranteed or granted to you before the filing of a petition for adoption of the child will automatically terminate or end by operation of law upon the entry of an order of adoption. So again, even after your hard work, if that child is later adopted, any rights you have to visitation time will end by operation of law. So when the court does anything regarding minor children, they always consider various factors that determine if their action would be in the child's best interest. And this is no different. So in determining whether to grant vis um, visitation to a parent, I'm sorry, a grandparent, great grandparent, step parent or sibling, the court shall consider the following factors. The first factor is number one, the wishes of the child taking into account the child's maturity and ability to express reason and independent preference as to visitation. Number two, the mental and physical health of the child. Number three, the mental and physical health of that grandparent, great-grandparent, sibling, or step-parent. Number four, the length and quality of the prior relationship between the child and that grandparent, great-grandparent, step-parent, or sibling. Number five, the good faith of the party in filing the petition. Six, the good faith of the person denying visitation. Again, why is that grandparent, great-grandparent, sibling, or step-parent petitioning the court for visitation time? And then two, why is that parent denying those person's visitation time? The court considers both of those. Number seven, the quantity of the visitation time requested and the potential adverse impact that visitation would have on the child's customary activities. Number eight, any other factor that establishes that the loss of the relationship between the child and the petitioner is likely to do or cause undue harm to the child's mental, physical, and emotional health. Then number nine, whether visitation can be structured in a way to minimize the child's exposure to conflicts between the two adults. Again, one adult wants to visit, one adult says, no, you can't visit. So again, the court wants to minimize that friction between those two parents and the child. So there are some things that, again, will automatically prohibit or make you getting an order for visitation time very difficult. The law is very well settled that, again, no child's grandparent, great-grandparent, sibling, or step-parent, or any other person to whom the court is considering granting visitation privileges to will have that order granted if they were convicted of any offense involving an illegal sex act perpetrated upon a victim less than 18 years of age. However, visitation will be denied until a person successfully completes a treatment program approved by the court. So even if you've been a convicted of, of this sexual act upon a minor, if you complete the court-awarded um, treatment program, the court will consider the factors that I just mentioned before and when they grant or deny your petition for, for visitation with this minor child. Also keep in mind that no parent, I'm sorry, no grandparent, great-grandparent, step-parent or, or sibling will get an order granting visitation if that person has been convicted of first-degree murder of a parent, grandparent, great-grandparent, or sibling of the child to whom is, a, is the subject of this visitation order or, I guess, petition or request. Okay, so again, if you have killed that child's parent, grandparent, sibling, or anyone else that's in the immediate family, you will not get an order for parenting time or visitation time with this child. That concludes our segment for this Wednesday. I hope it was very informative for you. Keep in mind, What You Should Know Wednesday is never intended to take the place of a one-on-one -on -one legal consultation. So if you feel you need more and further assistance, I would advise you to contact my office at 773-770-4771 or schedule a consultation online at pinklaw.acuityscheduling.com. Again, that is pinklaw.acuityscheduling.com. That's all the time I have for today. I will see you next Wednesday, and thank you for tuning in.